Welcome to Jazz Time. Jazz Time is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch, click the link in the description below to buy it at the lowest price anywhere online. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Patek Philippe Aquanaut Rose Gold, reference 5968R001, the Aquanaut Chronograph. I'm going to talk to you about the dial, the bezel, the case, the bracelet, the movement, give you a little bit of history and my thoughts, and try it on. So let's start. This is the Aquanaut. It's the most popular line in Patek Philippe. The two most popular lines, or most desirable lines, are the Nautilus and the Aquanaut. The Nautilus came first. It was designed in 1976, four years after the Royal Oak Offshore from Audemars. Four years after the Royal Oak Offshore Audemars, and it was the answer to AP's Royal Oak, which then came the Nautilus. Then, many years later, I want to say about 25 years ago or so, uh, 20 or so plus years ago, Patek Philippe wanted to introduce a sports watch that was more geared towards a younger audience and had a more sporty line than the Nautilus. Now, the Nautilus is Patek's sports line, but with a steel bracelet, it can still look a bit dressy, and Patek Philippe wanted to have a more complete sports watch. And what better way to do that than with a and what better way to do that than put a rubber strap on it? And Patek Philippe also needed an answer to AP's offshore. Again, Offshore Audemars Piguet was the first market on a luxury steel sports watch in the Royal Oak line. Then AP came out in, I want to say, about 1993 or so with the Offshore, so which is about 30 years ago. And that was a bigger or more sporty version of the Royal Oak. And Patek Philippe had to do pretty much the same thing, follow suit. So they created the Aquanaut, which, if you look at it, is strikingly similar, at least in terms of function. It's just done in a Patek Philippe way. It's like what the Offshore is to the Royal Oak, the Aquanaut is to the Nautilus. Okay, so this is Patek Philippe's complete sports watch line. This is the sportiest watch that they have, and it makes sense because it's on a rubber strap. And now why would you want it on a rubber strap? Well, if you're going to do a sport type activity, one, it's more comfortable, and two, it's more durable. Three, it doesn't scratch because it's rubber, or if it does, you can easily replace it. So those are some of the benefits of having it on rubber. So this is its sports line. Now, since it came out, it's gone through several evolutions. I'm not going to talk about all of them besides just saying that the Aquanaut comes with a smaller entry-level version, which is just time and date only. It's a 40 millimeter. it's also quite thin, and then they came out with a dual time or traveler's time, which is about 40 millimeters as well, so it's smaller. And then Pate came out with a chronograph version about five years ago in steel, around 2018 or so, and it was the first time that it was a much bigger watch, 42 millimeters in fact. So it's a perfect size for a sports watch. You don't really want to go much bigger than 42. The Audemars Offshore is 43, so 42, 43 is about as big as you want to get, and Patek Philippe being a more conservative brand, I can see why they went with 42. So they went with 42, they came out on steel, and then not long after, I want to say maybe three years ago, so probably 2020, roughly, they came out with two white gold versions, a blue and a green, which did very well. There's beautiful watches. And finally, in 2023, which is the time of making this video, they came out with these rose gold versions of this watch, which a lot of people have been waiting for, and it's sort of the accumulation or the evolution of the chronograph line. I would have to say it's probably the epitome. It's the very top. It's the best sports watch that Patek is going to make right now because, one, it's the largest, and usually larger is better, and two it's in rose gold. Now, white gold is great, but white gold can be mistaken for steel. It looks very, very similar. If you put them side by side, you might not even be able to tell the difference. Rose gold is quite obviously in gold, and it's also the most expensive. Well, actually, it's not the most expensive. They make some ladies' ones that are even more expensive, but for the men's, this one is it. Now, they don't make the men's Aquanauts with diamonds. They only do that with the ladies' Aquanauts. So, for men's, this is the most expensive one, and I would say it is the top of the line. So, you're looking at it. This is the best. This is what Patek Philippe has to offer. 
Okay, so now let's actually talk about it for a little bit, since I've given you some history and, you know, built it up and why this one is so great. Now, I would probably say that the number one thing that comes out that is very important about this watch is that it's 42 millimeters. In fact, it's 42.2, and that is the longest distance across the bezel, which is the 8 o'clock to the 2 o'clock position. If you measure that, it's 42 millimeters. And that does not include these pushers. So when you include the pushers, it's even larger, and it makes it look larger, but it's technically larger going left to right, as in 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock, left to right, instead of going up to down. If you make it larger going up and down 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, then it makes the watch not fit on your wrist. But going left to right, it's okay, as in 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, that's okay to make the watch larger in that direction. Anyways, that is 42 millimeters. Now let's turn it on its side. The height is 11.9 millimeters. Now, just to give you some reference, that's a very good size. If you look at the original Aquanaut, which is only 40 millimeters in diameter, the height is only 8 millimeters. And that's kind of a problem because now it's too skinny. It's too sporty to look like a sports watch. And it's too skinny to be a sports watch. And so that's kind of a problem because you don't want your sports watch to be too thin. So this Aquana Chronograph solves that by being just a little bit thicker. And Patek can't just make a watch thicker for no reason. It has to have a reason. And the reason is, in this situation, is that the chronograph is packed into this movement, which makes it thicker. Okay, now that is the case, and I've told you it's most perfect for men. It's 42 millimeters. Also, the height, where the thickness is pretty much 12 millimeters, is also perfect. I'll give you some reference. A Rolex is about 12 millimeters, which is known for its practicality. So in terms of size, dimension, it is quite perfect. But anyways, now let's move on to the dial. The dial is a sunburst dial with a black gradient rim embrossed with an aquanaut pattern and gold applied numerals with white luminescent coating. Okay, so if you look at the dial itself, you notice all these little squares that get bigger in the center and they sort of get smaller as you go out to the edge, kind of like a globe. And it gives the watch a little bit of a three-dimensional look to it, and I think it looks quite awesome. And also, if you notice, at the center is a little bit lighter than the edges. It has a gradient. Now, the center is brown, lighter brown, and as you go toward the periphery, the black gradient begins to come out, and it gets very dark at the edges. And that allows it to have an even more 3D look, as opposed to it just being a flat brown. And that detail is often overlooked. So you have to look carefully at this watch to know how Patek has paid such good attention to detail. And that's the dial. Now, you can notice here at the 6 o'clock position, there's a 60-minute counter. That's where the chronograph is running. Now, that allows you to check how much time has elapsed, and it's actually a pretty useful function. I would probably say that the most useful function is the chronograph function. Maybe a dual time is also useful, but yeah, this is also very useful. Okay, okay, so that's the dial. Oh, yeah, I'll also say that it has these luminescent hour markers, which makes the watch very readable. Since this is a sports watch, you have to be able to read it at night, and unlike some of the dress watches, which you cannot see at night because they don't even put luminescence on them, the Aquanet has a very fat luminescence. I think it's actually probably the fattest, the biggest of all the Patek Philippe because it's a sports watch, and so that means it's very legible at night. And if I shine this light on it, you can see that its luminescence is very bright and very easy to read at night. All right, so that is the dial. Now let's move on. Let's see here. Let's move on to the bracelet. Now the strap bracelet is a composite material made of rubber, dark brown, and it has an aquanaut folding over clasp at the end of it. Now, the strap is sized by cutting the edges off, so that's one size. So if you cut off these little edges right here and then put the pins back in, put the buckle back on, and then you can only have it be this one size. There's no secondary size. You can't stretch it or anything. So you really do have to get it right the first time, and if you cut it wrong, then a new strap is like $600 or something like that. But if you get it right, it is very comfortable, and I like how it's already curved. And what else I noticed about this strap, look at the way that it integrates with the dial. I have to say, Patek sometimes doesn't really integrate their bracelets, which I personally don't like. 
They do that on some of their dress watches. They just slap on a silly black crocodile strap on their $60,000 watch and call it a day. That, to me, is not a very thoughtful way to present your gorgeous piece of art by putting it on a generic strap. But in this situation, what they have done is integrated very well, very nicely actually, and very thoughtfully, the rubber strap that with the case so that there's no holes. As you can see, the rim of the top of the bracelet is actually curved to match the case. And not only that, the dial, the theme of having the dial with these little blocks, that theme runs into the bracelet. Now, I'm not sure if Patek was copying AP or what, but Audemars does have the Mega Tapestry dial, which has these blocks too, and I kind of feel like Patek maybe copied that. They did it, of course, in their own way, but I cannot say that this watch came first. The Offshore came first, this one came second, and it looks strikingly similar to the Offshore, but that doesn't mean that this is a better watch or that the Offshore is a better watch, it's a matter of preference. But I can just say that the AP came first and the Aquanaut came second, and the Aquanaut looks a little bit like it copies that, which is not a bad thing because the Offshore is a legendary watch. It's beautiful, fantastic. But at any rate, what they have done here in Patek is they've made the bracelet actually follow the same pattern as the dial. And it makes the watch look much more continuous like it was designed this way, which, hey, it was. Okay, and that's the bracelet. Now let's go ahead and talk about the movement. The movement is a CH28520C528. It has 308 parts, which is kind of average for a chronograph. High 200s, low 300s is average. It has a flyback chronograph, which means you can hit the button at the top and it'll reset without having to start and stop the top. And it has a diameter of 30 millimeters, which to be honest is a little small for the size of the watch because actually their travel time is also 30 millimeters. And I believe their 40 millimeter watch 5167 is also 30 millimeters. So I think it's a little bit small for this watch, but somehow Patek figures out how to make it work correctly. Okay, all right, that's the movement. And of course, it's a beautiful Patek movement. Really, what else can I say? Uh, it has a power reserve of 45 to 55 hours, which is actually lagging behind AP, though, to be honest. AP, Audemars, their biggest competitor, is I believe their watches are like 70 hours, and their power reserve is measured of how efficient their watch is. So if it has a lower power reserve, it's not that efficient. So I kind of have to give the edge to AP on this aspect. Okay, but this is a smaller one, which I can say I like a little bit better because it's a smaller watch and I'm not a fan of huge watches. Okay, anyhow, let's move on. I guess that's actually it. I've talked about pretty much every single part, and now it's time for me to try this thing on and give you my thoughts. So I am 6 feet tall, 200 pounds, and as you can see when I put it on my wrist, it just looks fantastic. And I told you at the beginning of the video that, hey, if you want to buy this watch, click the link in the description below and buy it at the lowest price anywhere online at jazztime.com. That's J-A-Z-T-I-M-E dot com. And so, what are my thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that if you want a pure sports watch from one of the world's best watchmakers, and I would put the world's best watchmakers as Protect, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Vacheron Constantine, Richard Mill, and Rolex. These are probably the five... Not probably. These are the five best watchmakers. And in no particular order, I would probably put Patek Philippe, Audemars, and Richard Mill as the top three. But that's just my personal opinion. But I can't, I can't say which of those three are the better. All three are excellent. But anyway, so if you want a pure sports watch, this one is definitely more sporty than the Nautilus. And if you want a large one, the king of the hill, like the undisputed king of sports watches from Patek for men, of course, then this is it. I don't think that the white gold one is better than this. White gold is great, 
but it doesn't have that wow factor of rose gold. And this one is the best. It's the biggest, the baddest. It's got the most horsepower and you might get it because of its size. Size matters here. Having a tiny little 40 millimeter one with a thin eight millimeter thickness doesn't cut it. Not for a sports watch. That's why that watch never did well. It's kind of a strange watch, but this one, once they released the Aquanaut Chronograph in rose gold, it blew up. And the secondary market price reflects that. And if I had to compare it to the Offshore, well, I love the Offshore. It looks great. AP makes a fantastic Offshore, but it's still a little bit big for me. And I think this one is just a little bit better. Although it doesn't look as rugged as the Offshore, but it's still a little bit smaller and it fits the wrist just a little bit better. So I have to give the edge to Patek Philippe on this one. And I'll probably say this is a very top watch. And if you can afford it or if you want to buy it at all, simply click the link in the description below and buy it at jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.